And my talk is about, um, again, pediatric complicated retina detachment. And I am suggesting doing extensive ILM peeling um, combined with uh, complete vitrectomy. And the purpose of this study is to see whether um, this decreases the number of reoperations because I know that these are difficult cases and the reoperation rate is reported are usually high. This is our group of patients with different uh, pathology and uh, the group involved 79 eyes and they have um, underwent uh, vitrectomy and extensive ILM peeling and the age is between 4 and 16 years. And this is the different disease entities involved in this group. And the surgical technique, what I would like to stress is that I used no buckle. Well, this is the case of a late uh, retinal detachment complicating regressed ROP, and you can know uh, uh, the pathology from the configuration of the vessels. Usually, I detach the posterior hyoid without the use of trimsin alone so as to see the behavior of the underlying retina. I may confirm the completeness of detachment by the use of trimsin alone. And then eye lamb is peeled, and you see the peeling is started with the use of the tenus scraper, and then the retina is stabilized with PFCL, and the, um, the, the, the eye lamb is peeled extensively and trying to reach up to the, um, as far as peripheral, some cases you can reach up to the equator, but this is not usually uh, the case. This is the case at the time of silicon oil removal. The macular area is flat, no proliferation, except at the edge of the area where the ILM was removed. This is another case of congenital myopia, and you can see the adherence of the posterior hyaloid with the uh, retina. Several attempts were made with the use of the, uh, uh, the probe, and this is the ferrous uh, forceps is really very good forceps. And then the posterior retina is stabilized with PFCL and using both hands in order to complete the uh, dissection of the um, posterior hyoid up to uh, the periphery. Uh, you cannot tell where is the posterior border of the vitreous base, so you keep on trying to peel the posterior hyaloid and the best two instruments are the use of uh, two forceps and sometimes you, one is used as a fork. So, and you pull the posterior hyaloid and um, uh, between the uh, two limbs of this fork, which is uh, the other uh, forceps, until the posterior hyaloid is uh, completely removed. And um, then, um, After completing the, and then the, sometimes there are membranes that can be discovered under the PFCL, and in this case, you cannot do this except with the use of uh, two forceps, and this is followed by um, extensive ILM uh, peeling um, up to the equator, and This is another case of Stickler syndrome. Um, the, again, the ILM was peeled first without PFCL, and uh, because usually the contrast in these cases is poor, and, and you may restain, and then you can um, peel the ILM um, as far as you can, um, but not as in the previous case. This is at the time of silicon oil removal. The macular area is completely free except some proliferation on the nasal side. This is a case of congenital retinoschisa. The same was done. And this is the time of silicon oil removal, proliferation on the nasal side where the ILM was not removed. This is the case of um, Stickler syndrome, severe case of 36 degrees uh, giant retinal break where the, um, the, we tried to open the, the funnel and then uh, diathermy was applied, and um, we completed the uh, flap. We removed the PFCL, inject the dye, and removed the, the ILM. 
And this is the picture at the time of silicon oil removal. The retina is completely attached, no proliferation. So ILM, I, I, I consider ILM peeling in these cases is mandatory. ILM could be peeled at least over the posterior pole in all eyes. None of the eyes develop recurrent, uh, recurrent epiretinal membranes over the area of ILM peel. Recurrent epiretinal proliferation outside the area of ILM peel was encountered in 73 percent of cases, recurrent proliferation always stops at the um, edge of the ILM peel. Uh, recurrent retina detachment with or without PVR was encountered in 40.5% 40, 40 of cases, and we could achieve stable attached retina following silicon oil removal in 97% of eyes. So only two um, operations, one of them is silicon oil removal, was um, uh, done for in, in, in almost 60% of cases. So radical vitrectomy combined with extensive ILM peeling is effective. And ILM peeling, I believe, is mandatory in these cases in reducing the number of vitretinal procedures uh, required to achieve a stable attached retina. And this could be uh, two vitretinal procedures um, in 60% of these complicated cases. Thank you for your attention. Uh, so, Dr. Mo you're trying to peel the hyaloid more peripheral and uh, it's stuck really and then it's either you're going to be able to peel more and create breaks or you just leave it. What would you do? Would you create and break and deal with it or just leave it? Uh, and maybe both in adults and children, what do you do? Yes, uh, as I, I, I said, um, you do not know uh, the posterior border of the vitreous base where it is. So you have to peel until there is a resistance, and you know that there is a line. Um, so whenever you peel, this is a persistent line. So you stop here, and you try hard to trim the vitreous gel in this area um, using spiral indentation and, and uh, chandelier light, of course. And um, then you apply, uh, in this case, you usually apply 360 uh, laser sparing the horizontal meridian. Um, and I think um, these cases can be managed in this way uh, of course, you cannot prevent recurrence by using this technique. But even when recurrence uh, occurs, then the posterior pole is preserved, the macular area is preserved, and there is no proliferation um, over the macular area. So I think it, it serves to decrease the number of operations and in, improves the results of uh, re-operation. 